All right, real quick before we get to our next speaker. Everybody that's leaving, the place was really clean when we got here. Let's just try to take out what we took in, get everything picked up. I would really appreciate it. Also, Lieutenant Richards and the Capitol Police Department, big thank you. You guys have been great to work with. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tim Richmond. I'm a firefighter. I'm an EMT. I'm a parent. I'm a veteran. I'm a grandparent. And I thank God every day that it wasn't me that had to respond to Sandy Hook. On that day, we saw some of the best in human nature from our first responders. We saw a side that represents abject evil. Now let me say up front, I don't know what could be done to stop events like this from happening in the future, uh, short of re-engineering the human brain. Until human evolution somehow short circuits our propensity to harm our fellows, things like this is going to happen. And they've happened ever since Cain slew Abel with a rock. Quick, politically motivated fixes are not going to stop this. And I implore our legislators to remember the fact that you cannot legislate common sense or morality. Gun control is not the answer. Because only law-abiding people will give up their guns. Criminals will not. <laughs> America's tried prohibition before. How well did the 18th Amendment work? It didn't. Prohibition didn't last very long. All it did was make petty thugs crime czars. We're not going to get instant gratification. Funding, it's been mentioned before. They want to pass all these laws. Who's going to pay for them? Who's going to pay for all the cops, all the prosecutors, all the judges, corrections officers, prisons? for this new class of criminal that these people are going to create. There are those that say the Second Amendment doesn't guarantee the person's right to own a so-called assault weapon, that the Founding Fathers didn't have AR-15s in mind when the Constitution was written. Well, those folks apparently didn't pay much attention in American history class. Until the first third of the 20th century, the civilian in this country was better armed than a U.S. soldier. In every conflict until World War II, when the M1 Garand rifle was made standard, the firepower edge went to civilian citizens. In the Revolution, while both, Musket, uh, while both the British Army and American organized militia carried inaccurate smoothbore muskets, the unorganized militia units carried Kentucky rifles. They could hit a target accurately at 300 yards. Henry repeating rifles were available to citizens before they were offered to the army in the Civil War. One of the reasons for Custer's dismal failure at the Little Bighorn was the short-sightedness of the army in arming their troopers with single-shot trapdoor Springfields. Sitting Bull had Henry's and Winchester's. Semi-auto rifles, shotguns, and handguns have been available to the general public well before the military and police routinely used them. Our founding fathers knew and embraced the fact that a free people should be afforded the same level of personal protection as those individuals whose job was keeping order. In other words, the bottom line is us. We don't all carry cops around. They're too heavy. Gun control should be keeping a weapon holstered until it's needed, and then, and only then, using it properly and accurately. To those in the media who have all left when it came time for public comment, I'm a member of the media. I'm a radio broadcaster. What they don't take into consideration when they say, oh, well, the First Amendment was, or the Second Amendment was nothing more than muskets. Well, back then, 
the First Amendment was standing on a soapbox like we're doing today, or writing with a quill pen. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have television. They didn't have any of the stuff that we have today. Do you want to be put under the same constraints that you're proposing to put us under? I don't think so. Quick fixes are usually poor in the long run. And I hope it stays in the minds of our elected officials while pondering this problem. I'm not a rocket scientist. I'm not a physicist. But I do remember learning Newton's third law in junior high school. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Politicians remember that. You're going to be looking for our votes pretty soon. Uh, ironically, that same principle is the same principle that firearms work under. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you.